All right. Hey, well, I want to quickly go to our next guest, who is someone you uh, you all should be familiar with, and that is uh, the man who's running to take Emmanuel Cleaver's job, uh, Jacob Turk. Hey, Jacob, how are you doing? Hey, Chris, I'm doing real good. Thank you for having me on. Oh, my pleasure. So, well, first of all, before we talk about your race, uh, what, what are your thoughts on the debate? Uh, that the uh, the president had two distinct disadvantages, that uh, uh, Mitt Romney is not John McCain when it comes to debating. Yeah. And then uh, in 2008, uh, the uh, future president was able to say anything he wanted, but now he has a record of failure to defend, so I'm sure it's very frustrating for him. Yeah, yeah, and it's a very tough record. I, you know, and, and I think the, uh, the the topic of Wednesday night's debate put all of put most of his bad points of his record right front and center. So it was a uh, a tough set of topics for the president to to deal with. But let's talk about your race. So, um, what is this? This is your is this your third. <laughs> Fourth time. Fourth time. Fourth time. We almost won the third time. Third okay. time was almost the charm. The fourth time will be the charm. Okay, so tell me the percentages. And a lot of people have been pulling for you these years saying, come on, we got to get Jacob over the top. Um, what are, can you give us a quick uh, summary of uh, the, the races you've gone up against Cleaver? What have been the percentages uh, each time? Uh, well, the first time uh, I got 32%, and I think he doubled me up that time. The second time I got 36%, which was the year of Obama, and a lot of people were surprised yeah. we gained 4%. So we closed the gap. And then in, 20, in 2010, it took off. Uh, people uh, saw we had a real opportunity to win towards the end, so they they piled on. But Cleaver saw we had an opportunity to, to win, too. So he spent a bunch of money at the end, and he was way able to hold us off. We were able to get within... Uh, you know, within percentage points, and then he expanded it, so it was 53-44 the last time. So you got up to 44. So 32, 36, 44. The numbers are moving in the right direction. Uh, oh, they are, and uh, the evidence of that is anybody can look at the redistricting map, Yeah. and uh, if they look at that little finger that goes through Jackson County, uh, my wife, Don, and I live in a home that I've lived in for 30 years, and uh, somehow it got cut a half mile outside of the 5th District. Hmm. Well... That's uh, that's interesting. <laughs> it is interesting. Yeah. Uh, and we sh we show people that map all the time, and when people say, hmm. well, can Turk beat Cleaver? I say, well, Cleaver thinks Turk can beat Cleaver. Wow. So did you have to move, or what happened? Well, at the congressional level, uh, you, as long as you're a citizen of the state, I meet all the requirements. Oh, that's that right. That's could, right. Yeah, yep. yeah, you could still technically uh, you can still represent it, even regardless of where you live within the state. Um, right. Interesting. Uh, so anyway, the uh, you, you're coming up to the big day. What is it? Thirty days away now. Um, what are you? What's what's your opponent doing? I mean, you've you've also been hammering uh, Representative Cleaver for a long time on his extremely liberal record. Um, anything you know? Anything this year that you're finding is particularly effective in the campaign? Well, there's there's a few things. One was the redistricting. It was obvious that he used his uh, political poll to pull us out, and and people are just. Tired of self-serving politicians yeah. that uh, uh, use political dirty tricks, uh, try to eliminate the competition. It, yeah. it didn't work. The other thing is, is the uh, car wash loan, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. which he's really trying to make go away. And they did the trial in April uh, 2013 instead of during this time. Uh -huh. And a lot of people are saying, "Well, how does he? You know, why does he get these special favors?" And would a, an ordinary person, like if I did it, uh, then would I get this kind of uh, special favoritism? Yeah. And the last thing about it that, that people may not be aware of, we're required to disclose. You ran for Congress. We're required to disclose our finances. Sure. And he has never disclosed that loan. And in addition, he's uh, even though he bought the property for up, upwards over $1.5 million, he's always claimed it's only worth $250,000 on his disclosure form. So... There's a whole can of worms there. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, so that that's resonating. And then we just found out, and and uh, we'll just give people a teaser because we're looking into it, that uh, a, a prominent member of this church got appointed uh, to be director of the SBA of this re region in January of 2011, just as this um, suit was going to be filed. So there's hmm. a lot of things going on there. Interesting. And what about uh, some of his bad votes in the last two years? Have you been uh, hitting those pretty hard? Oh, absolutely. The same record that uh, the president has to defend is the same record that Cleaver has to defend. And you should ask me how my debates have been going with Cleaver. <laughs> okay, how are your debates going? Well, uh, seeing that he doesn't show up to a single one and I'm debating with an empty chair, are you uh, kidding they've gone real well. I'm not kidding. Are you kidding me? I have, does, no. the, does the Kansas City Red Star print that, that, that he uh, doesn't show up? 
No, they they don't at all. We've had uh, several forums, and he's always uh, once he finds out I'm showing up, uh, he suddenly gets busy. Um, because I'm not John McCain either. I, I've never debated anyone, but I know what I stand for and I know what I believe in. And he's got a record. He well, does he agree? Stand. Does he agree to uh, at least one or two debates where he does show up? He he has agreed to show up to a couple of forums, and, and then suddenly, uh, when it becomes known that I'm going to be there, suddenly he's a very busy guy. Well, what about uh, just a, a, a one-on-one debate? Has he agreed to that? No, no, not at all, not really? at all. Our next our next chance uh, for him to get on the stage with me will be in Higginsville coming up. Uh, I think it's October nineteenth, eighteenth. I have to look at that. Unbelievable! I'm not surprised at all that the Kansas City Red Star is not calling him on this, but. Geez, if you're if you're going to represent your district in Congress and you won't even stand on the stage and square off against your opponent, that's uh, that's pretty sad. It is sad because he's got he's got a dismal record. Uh, there are there are many things that he has to defend, and these policies are in place now. He voted for all of them. He voted for TARP and the bailouts, uh, which put us on the hook and led us down to this trillions and trillions of dollars in debt. Um, his policies are, are bad for small businesses, where over 60% of the jobs in this economy, new jobs, come from small businesses. And his policies are to hurt small businesses, and he favors this overbearing bureaucracy. Uh, we keep hearing in small business roundtables, EPA and OSHA, they're, they're just killing yeah. the job creation engine of America. Yeah. It, I mean, you're absolutely right. He's just on the Obama train and you know, voting for policies that are so hurtful to small businesses. In and he case. wants, you know, we've heard about tax again that's coming up uh, January 1st. And small businesses, you know, we've talked to hundreds of small business owners, and they are just, they're like the deer in the headlights. They, they are so afraid to hire a new person because they don't know what that person's going to cost them. And Emmanuel Cleaver supports all these policies and put forth these policies that of raising taxes on small businesses, of all these onerous regulations so that they don't even know what somebody's going to cost. And Obamacare, of course, he was a huge supporter of Obamacare. In fact, he almost didn't vote for Obamacare. You want to know why? Why is that? Because he wanted a direct single payer system. Once the president, <laughs> That's right. Obamacare wasn't good. It wasn't. It wasn't more. It wasn't enough of a government uh, takeover. He wanted more government. He he does. And yeah. So and so the president let everybody know that Obamacare would be the way to get to a single payer system, so yeah. that the uh, the uh, license bureau can run your health care for you and decide whether you get procedures. Yeah. Well, I'm not surprised. Well, okay, uh, Jacob, tell everyone uh, what's your website if people want to learn more about your candidacy or contribute. Well, uh, it's uh, TurkForCongress.com, TurkForCongress.com, and we have a big lit drop going up this next Saturday, the 13th. People can go online and, and volunteer for that. Just sign up on our volunteer page, and, and our volunteer coordinator will give every person this week that signs up a call so that they can help us get the message out there. We did uh, an, an exciting internal poll for us a week and a half ago, and the race, we're slightly ahead. But it's very really? close. Wow. Uh, yes, in over 20%. Here's the sobering part, though, and this is where the election lies in those who help us their hands. Over 20% of the voters are undecided in this race. Wow. Well, that's good for the challenger. Anytime that you've got a large number of undecideds, they tend to break for the challenger, so that's great. Well, hey, uh, speaking of Saturday the 13th, there's also, also that event, uh, the March uh, on Liberty Memorial or, uh, yep. or for Liberty uh, at Liberty Memorial. For Liberty. For yeah. the March for Liberty at Liberty Memorial. <laughs> there you go. Um, at Union Station, it begins at 9 a.m. Are you going to be there? I will be speaking at that that event and, and just highlighting and highlighting things like uh, you know Cleaver's got a zero rating from the National Federation of Independent Businesses and so he's he's just not good for the economy or job creation. And there's uh, there's no way to uh, spin it in his favor on that category. Well, great, Jacob. Uh, best of luck to you in the lit drop and in the campaign itself. That's great news to hear that uh, the polls are showing you ahead. And that the boy things seems the, the wind seems to be at your back, man. It'll be great if you can, uh, can can beat Cleaver this time around. Well, thanks so much for calling in, and thanks for being part of the show. Thank you, Chris. We just have to finish our work, and on November sixth, we'll be victorious. I I certainly hope so. All right, take care, Jacob. All right. You-